Right, okay, fan reaction time then. Oxford United nil, Burnley nil. Literally just got back now, knackered. Um, missed the crash on the M40 though, which is good. Um, seen a few people on Twitter sort of like saying that they were crashed on the M40, but I just got out straight away. Clapped the lads off at full time, got straight in the car, didn't hang about. Remember the Oxford fans sort of like saying that car park can get busy. Anyway, I'm <laughs> digressing already. I just don't want to talk about the match because it was that dreadful. Um, yeah, boring match, really. Oxford made it that way, but the onus is on us. And I feel like I've said this after pretty much every game apart from the Leeds game. But the onus is on us to take the game to these types of teams that just want to sit back and, and don't want to play any football. If that's what they want to do, that's fine. I still don't really feel as Burnley fans when we did it to the Premier League for four or five years that we can sit here and complain when a team does it to us but I know it's, a, I know it's the, you know, the, the main example a, a very, very high team to compare us to but look at Manchester City every time we sat back against them they just picked us off and, and, and beat us with ease didn't they um, we're obviously not Man City um, but we need to find a way to beat these teams that just, that just sit back because um, Blackburn did it Portsmouth I won't say they're sat back, but Oxford have done it as well. And we've just struggled in both of their games. Like We've not created enough chances. Like We can't sit here and say we're unlucky not to win the game, even though we had all the territory, I presume. I've not seen the territory stats, but just from my eyes, I would imagine that we had all the territory. We definitely had all the possession. Um, and we just... And we dictated the pace of the game now it's normally up to the home side to do something like that but it felt like we were the home side to be fair because Oxford were just sitting back and said you do what you want to do you come on to us and you break us down and it was it was poor from us we, we didn't do that uh, there was a couple of shots um, there was a one from Foster which I very quickly looked at the highlights um, just quickly skimmed through on two times um, when I was stuck in the um, Oxford car park keys obviously quickly out of the ignition if any policemen are watching this and the, you know the, the car wasn't on um, but I quickly just watched it um, and that foster chance in the first half it actually looked a lot better than what it looked from the away end I thought it was sort of like towards the edge of the box and just a bit of a wild effort but it's actually a bit closer and it's poor for Lyle um, we'll get into individuals in a bit and more on the full time show tomorrow um, obviously Sarmiento had that shot in the second half which was not as big of a chance Looking back at the highlights, but at the time it felt like it were. Um, and he just blazed it high, wide and over. And then two very poor efforts. Obviously, we had the Corley Orshaw one where he cut inside and bent it. Looked like it was going in, but keepers made a good save, to be fair to him. Um, and that's it. That is literally it. Like We had that free kick, that god-awful free kick. I remember I cracked a joke to, to, to my little lad. He didn't get it, he's only six. <laughs> But I cracked a joke to him and just said, good job Josh Brown was not standing over this because my car's windscreen were getting smashed because I was parked in the thing behind it, as I said. Um, but I wish Josh Brown was taking it because that was god awful. No pace, no height, nothing. Just hit the wall and trundled away. And didn't they have a counter-attack from it? We were just awful in, in possession. We just didn't do enough with it. And I, I've said it once, I've said it a million times. That midfield three of Hannibal, Cullen and Brownell isn't the midfield three that you want when you've got to take the game to teams. They're too slow on the ball. They don't drive forward. There were so many times when, even the centre-backs as well, to be fair, would have the ball and they'd just mess around with it and then they'd give it in midfield and they'd do a, a few quick passes and a few quick triangles. And we just weren't getting anywhere. I mean, we were doing it too slow. Then it'd go back to Trafford and then it'd go to the full-backs and then they'd try and get it to the wingers. What made me laugh, and I was laughing by it at the end, I got a bit frustrated in the first half with it, but they did about 300, obviously I'm exaggerating, but like 300 cross-field passes where they switched it from one full-back all the way to the other winger. And obviously I understand they're trying to move Oxford out of position, they're trying to move the player, they're trying to get them tired. But it didn't work at any point. At no point did that cross-field pass work. At no point did it ever drag any of the Oxford players out of position. And at no point did it ever really... There was one point in the first half where Corley Orshaw did break the... You know, get get past the, the their full-back and did get in behind him and he put the ball across. That was the Lyle chance, if I, if I remember rightly. Um, so there was that one occasion, I suppose, where you could say it worked. But obviously we didn't score from it, so ultimately the end goal, it didn't work. And they just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And I'm thinking, all right, lads, come on now. Let's try something different. It just looked all a bit one-dimensional is what I'm trying to say. They just didn't really seem to have enough ideas of what to do. They had the cross-field pass. They had the switch ball. 
And then after that, it was, well, that's not worked. So let's just try it again 30 times. And it just looked a little bit slow, a little bit pedestrianized. We just needed to do more with it. We needed more of a, a focal point. And that brings me on to Lyle. He's had another poor game today, but and he's getting a lot of stick on social media. When I say poor, he had the one chance and he snatched at it and he should have done better with it. But it's very, very, very difficult for a striker to play against a team that is camped in their own 18-yard box. There's just no space. And then that obviously brings Lyle into the thing where he, he drops state, which fans then get frustrated with him. I, I genuinely feel, and I know there's been something about a Z and Fleming injury. I've, I've not obviously seen a lot of the stuff on social from the likes of Matt Scrafton and you know the other reporters. I believe Warrell's out for a few weeks with a an impact injury. I saw a rumour after the team sheet was announced that he'd broken his foot. That might be the case, I'm not sure. But it's looking like he's out for a while. Um, but I've not seen some of the stuff about Fleming. I've heard it's a hamstring. I don't know if that's already out there on Twitter. I might be wrong. So hopefully he isn't out for a while. But I do feel like somebody in the 10 who's good with the ball at his feet, who can make things happen, can drag players out of position, can play the ball through, will massively help Lyle because he needs some help. He's had another poor game today. But again... I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but how, how, how long do we have to keep saying this? How long do we have to keep saying we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt? But I feel like today was difficult for him because of the way that Oxford played. But the next two games we've got coming up, Plymouth Argyle at home, they're just going to sit back. Preston North End at home, they're just going to sit back. Two teams that are going to be down there, two teams that all they want to do this season is survive. They're going to just sit back and say, break us down. We have to learn how to break them down. And I want to go back to the midfield point. I, I always digress, don't I? But the midfield point, I just feel like Hannibal, Brownhill and Cullen are too slow. They are not the midfield that you want when you need to take the game to teams. You need people in the midfield that are better with the ball at the feet. Now, Cullen's, we all love Cullen, he's fantastic. But I just feel like... The other two, again, I love Josh and I feel like he gets a bit of stick. I like Hannibal and I think he presses very, very well. But do we need a midfielder in there who's going to be pressing well and putting himself about? There was a lot of times where he got the ball and it was too slow to release it or he'd do a stray pass. I wouldn't be playing Hannibal in these next two games personally. Hannibal's the type of player, and I know I've said it before, so apologies for repeating myself, but Hannibal's a type of player that we needed at Leeds away, that we will need at West Brom away, that you know we, we needed up at Sunderland away, you know, them sort of grounds and them sort of games, and at home against them teams as well, I don't think he's the player for Oxford United away, Plymouth at home, Preston at home, I'd drop him for the next two, um, and I never thought I'd say this about Laurent, Laurent, Loren, um, but I'd have him in there because I didn't feel like he was this type of midfielder. Apologies to him, I obviously didn't see much of him at Stoke, to be fair. But from what I saw of him against Portsmouth when he came on and he drove us up the pitch, didn't he? He got us up the pitch 30, 40, 50 yards with the ball at his feet, just running and dragging us up. And then we've then moved from captain our own half because we can't get out because Stubies are pissing about with it to in our own half with them on the back foot running at the defenders. And that's how we ended up getting the two goals. Or, or sorry, definitely the winner. Just from getting up the pitch. And the same with the Sami Ento goal against Port. He, he, he did that. I thought he was good today without really creating anything. Um, I like him. He, he looks good. I do remember Ipswich fans sort of like saying he's more of a substitute impact player. And I can kind of see that based on today. Like he was in the game a lot, wasn't he? Both wingers were, um, without really doing too much. And he had a couple of poor efforts as well. I've mentioned the one that he put over the bar and there was an awful one in the first half where I think he tried to bend it round, but he just kind of dragged it. I don't know. I, I couldn't really see properly from where I were. And if it wasn't the highlights, I've not seen it. Um, thought Coley Oshaw played well. Um, looked a little bit frustrated at times. I feel like he wants the ball quicker. He wants us to move the ball quicker. Um I saw him getting a bit of criticism online, actually, as well. I'm not for that. I thought Coley Osho played well. Um, end product, not the best again, I suppose you could say, but it's difficult when a team's camping. And he did have the shot that the keeper saved, to be fair. Uh, but some of the passes could have been better. Uh, saw Miento, as I said, busy, but without really creating much. Um, who else was there that played very well? Esteve, personally, my man of the match. 
Uh, might change my mind by the time if I do the live tomorrow. Obviously, I won't. But yeah, Esteve was fantastic. He made that tackle at the end, didn't he? Or towards the end. Um, yeah, absolute rock is that guy. And I love him. Uh, I love the fact that he's a Burnley player. Easily the best defender in the league, um, if you ask me. But yeah, overriding feeling. Frustrated. Uh, because we are too slow in possession. We're not good enough with the ball. We're not moving it quick enough. Um, and that's it. We've got to learn how to break these teams down because the next few games are against teams that will do that to us. So, Scott, lads, watch the video, learn your lesson, and hopefully we can um, do a bit better against Preston and Plymouth because we've got some games against teams where we should be winning, but today was also one of them games as well. But again... Early days, early team, new team, sorry. There's going to be bumps in the road, as Parker said, and let's not forget for how great we were under Vincent Company in that championship season, some of these earlier games were draws against lesser opposition. Um, so let's see where we are in a bit. And of course, we did draw to Blackpool away that year, who did get relegated. That was also a nil-nil and a very boring game. Uh, not as boring as this one, admittedly. Um, but yeah, that was also a nil-nil and a very boring game. But yeah, frustrated, not moving the ball quick enough. We need to learn how to break these types of teams down and quick. But up the clarets.